the Maestri Palia project yeah. itself it should be in the region of about 10 years. Uh, I have been involved in it for maybe about eight years, uh, maybe nine. Uh, so yes, it's a 10 year project and at, ten, at the end of 10 years we are just about at the cusp of getting a lake. We're talking 2015 now, so 2005, 2005, 2006 okay. is when the uh, you know activity started. Right. There was uh, uh, before that uh, activities in some form was there. But I would I would just say organized activity mm. in terms of uh, trying to get the lake mm. is about 10, 10, 11 years old. 10, 11 years old. As to as of today, if you ask me exactly when, I, I can't even remember it. It's, it's that long. It's that long uh, back, you know. So it's been a long, long time. Uh, in my case, it's, it was very simple. It was a, uh, it was a uh, handing over the baton kind of a, kind of a situation where there was a particular group who had fought in uh, courts to get open spaces for for Koromangla, and they got a judgment which said that any civic amenity site remaining must be kept as open site, as 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 commons as a space, and it should not be used uh, for anything else should be open spaces. So this group said, look, this is a great opportunity now to uh, use this judgment to get back the lake, which was in a quandary kind of a feeling. And that group, which was small, did not have probably the, uh, or they were exhausted probably to carry on the next fight. So they kind of handed over the baton and asked me and my group whether we'd like to take it on. Yes, we said we would take it on. So from there on, we took it on. So it, it, we, didn't, we didn't take it from the inception. There was another group which, uh, uh, which had knowledge of this area and then they needed somebody to, a group to start running it more aggressively uh, and so we took, on, we took on that role, we took on that role. My group had been on uh, civic, uh, civic issues of Koromangla and Pan Bangalore for quite some time. So, so I mean that's uh, various issues here and there but Mesipale Lake itself missed, we missed uh, we had missed it and we had not really focused on it and we had not even known about the details of it. Mm. So we were, we were looking at uh, uh, the overall planning uh, uh, situations of Bangalore, mm. how uh, Bangalore spaces uh, should be uh, uh, um, you know, split and how it should be given, in a sense, contributions to the master plan, mm. uh, how the planning of uh, the city should be done. Mm. And so a lot of the efforts of the group was involved in that area. So uh, the question of Mestipalia and Mestipalia Lake kind of dovetailed into uh, our, our area of interest, okay. uh, which is really to look at spaces for citizens. Okay. And how do, you, how, do you, how, do you, how do you make a city livable is the overall context or the philosophy or the belief system that we have or we are trying to follow. And so therefore a lake in the center of uh, uh, you know, Koromangla as we are, uh, yeah, it's just, uh, you know, it was perfect for our uh, interest. When uh, it was, uh, uh, it was just uh, uh, wasteland. Uh, it was just dry. Uh, there was no lake of a, of any kind. The uh, the embankments were all broken down, and uh, uh, well, there were cattle walking around, and uh, uh, it was like a, it was like a, it was like an open field. It was like an open field. And yes, there were people from the village and other people who were using it for walking in and around. That is the physical nature of the land. Uh, but behind the physical nature of the land was the, uh, you know, the various uh, uh, fights for rights on this land. Mm -hmm. So essentially, this was a this was a case of uh, real estate. Mm -hmm. It was not perceived as a lake. Nobody looked at it as a lake. Everyone was looking at it as a piece of prime real estate. So and and there there were litigations, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Which, and so therefore the status of the lake, fortunately, because there were warring groups on that, was just vacant land, is what it was. So, so we inherited uh, the space and we inherited, we, at the time of we taking out the fight, it was vacant land. The nature of the war was very simple actually. I mean, it was, it was, a, it was a particular person who said this land belonged to him in a, in a private capacity. And this person uh, uh, happened to be uh, one of the biggest landowners in Koromangla, the Eswile Koromangla, where it was there, which was 
bought over by the government, bought, not just not uh, not just taken over, but bought over by the government to develop the uh, to develop the uh, layout of Kor Mangla, for which he was supposedly uh, you know uh, ably compensated. So, but his stand was that this particular piece of land was not compensated for, and uh, it was his own area, and this was his lake, and it was his own area. So that was his stance. And he took that fight, uh, 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 so legally he has been the uh, guy who's been fighting it for much more longer than us. If we've been here for 10 years, double that, double that or triple that, 20, 30 years he, he had been fighting for that piece of land, saying that it's his, his land. And on the other side was the government, uh, which was a blow hot, blow cold kind of a, kind of a situation. Uh, various different government uh, agencies, different avatars of government. At some stage, you would say that they want the land. At some stage, they would say it is it is this man's land, according to the winds and according to the equations that were happening. Um, we came into uh, into uh, this heated battle between uh, the two litigants who are really the private owner, a private person who is taking his owning, and therefore he is fighting against the government. Uh, what, what I'm trying to say is that at some stages there was collusion and some stages there was no collusion. So that is the reason that the case kept on going. Some cases it was almost colluded and it was totally given to him and then there would be some disruption somewhere and then uh, the two parties would take different, different sides. So our input was to come in here with a, with a different viewpoint of not government land or not uh, private land but it's a lake. And therefore, the lake has to be protected under various uh, clauses, etc. Is what we did. The real estate fight was very deep because uh, we are quite aware that uh, even prior to uh, uh, prior to uh, 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 getting ownership of the land, memorandum of articles and you know uh, letters have already exchanged hands with back to back to behind. You know, in, in the event we get the land, this is what it is, and you know, deals were already being struck. And uh, one of these, one of the effects of that was planting some hutments in the center of this uh, land. Uh, hutments meaning, you know, 10 by 10 little little places, and actually putting people there to stay. So there were seven, eight hutments, which would make it that much more difficult to take over the land, you know, in terms of, uh, uh, you know, Vacating, vacating people is not a simple thing, uh, which which we did at a much later stage. So that's that's uh, that's the story as far as the land, the status of the land is concerned. Yeah, it, it's it's basically the uh, 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 we have realized in our in our various civic fights that data is available. I mean, uh, it's, it's it's only a question of how deep you want to go and how much you want to spend. Uh, you know, the paper trail. The bureaucracy has a very, very long paper trail, right? Uh, it's very difficult to hide things in the Indian system. It is inefficient, and uh, uh, on the uh, and a lot of people uh, with vested interests assume there will be no people who will chase the papers. But once there is a group which chases the papers, then the fight is cut is almost uh, you know uh, cut and uh, cut and dry. It's, it's, it's an open and shut case. In this case, it is very simple. So our argument was uh, uh, that lakes cannot belong to anybody per se. Lakes have to be uh, government property by law uh, at, at one level. At one level, uh, that was the argument. Second level of argument was that this claim that he was not compensated for this land. Again, it comes to the same thing. If it's a lake, it's already a government, government land. So, the, the kind of papers that were produced in court prior to our coming was obviously falsified documents. So, so it was just a little bit of work to be done to actually get the actual documents and put it in front of the courts and saying that, look, this is what it is and uh, you know, create and break down the thing. See, what happens in most of these cases is that when there is collusion, uh, the, it's, it's a private party versus the government. So if the government can either take, uh, the government lawyer can either take a very serious view about it and fight the case or be absent for the case or mentally absent for the case. And in and this, that was the problem. In many times the, the government lawyers were, or briefing was absent. Uh, application of mine was not there because they were not interested in fighting because there was another deal struck elsewhere. So when we came in as a third party into this with a with a with a non-vested, okay, we had a vested interest. The vested interest is to keep it as comments, 
and therefore we were able to produce papers which are pure, uh, which would have been very difficult for any court of law to uh, not to not to uh, look at it. So it, it went from High Court to Supreme Court also. So we were we are participating in the Supreme Court uh, area also to, uh, in this fight. And uh, broadly speaking, uh, we played two roles in the in the legal cases. One was to be an ombudsman or a, or a watchdog. Mm. Since we are in court, then the government uh, agencies were that much more worried about how they would fight the case because we were there. Mm. And we would be able to point out, no, that's a wrong, this is right, this is wrong. So that was, a, it, it was less a fight about the other person. It was more a fight about the government claiming uh, rightfully their land, rightfully their land as, as custodians of the land for citizens and making them play that role uh, was really the, uh, the task that was in our hands. The, Hutt claims the Hutmans uh, was solved much, much later after the courts decided that it is, it is, it is, a, it is a lake, that it is, uh, uh, it is government property, that no private person's land is there. So after all that was decided, uh, uh, and then we went into the project mode of uh, uh, actually getting a lake going. Then what we did was actually, there were six, seven, seven families. So we could have had one of two things, one of two approaches we could have had. Uh, by right, they have to be evicted, all right? So we could have had a hard view on that area. But what we actually did was go around and collected money, uh, a fair amount of money, mm. so that we could actually displace, I mean, uh, replace the people elsewhere, which means that we told each of these uh, seven families that you find a house, either in the village or elsewhere, and we will pay the deposit of that, of that place to the landlord, not to you. Mm. And that is how we, we, uh, we had the seven people uh, moved from that area, of their own accord, by talking to them and saying that, look, you're not supposed to be here. So, I mean, um, it's an offer that you can't, you, you can't refuse. Because you know, if, if, if they say we want to be there, then it becomes the uh, uh, ax of getting removed, uh, evicted uh, strongly, and then other political pressures would have come in. But talking sense into them, saying that this is a fight that you cannot win, you cannot stay here. The courts have already decided on the nature of this land. But as a community, uh, there's only seven people, so we have collected money and we would like to, uh, you to have a good life elsewhere. But we did not find them rental accommodation. We told them, you go find yourself a rental accommodation. This is the amount of money that we have available, which is reasonable. And uh, the deposits, I think the finally it was a deposit plus one month rent or something like that. We will give to the landlord, not to you. Mm. All right? Most of them were happy with it. It was very easy, but you know, it, uh, uh, if we had tried to do that much earlier, it would have been hard. Uh. Uh, it was done at a time when uh, the legalities of the situation was over, when the, uh, when the uh, what do you call it, uh, when the bulldozers were around the corner. Uh, not, I mean, not physically, but you know, it's quite imminent that the lake work is going to start, little by little. So, so therefore, it's, it, it came, became okay. Yes, and I think that's an ongoing thing, and, and, and that's a... Uh, that's a uh, uh, I would say it is a failure of myself and a lot of our groups uh, in the sense that uh, we have never really been able to, uh, uh, you know, be that inclusive, inclusive in, to, in terms of, uh, uh, you know, uh, carrying them together and being one force. Uh, there, are, there are obviously different points of view. From the wealthier part of Koromangla, we are looking at it as a lake, environmental area, etc., etc., etc. From the village perspective, they are seeing it as an extension of their village and saying that if my village expands, where will I go? So this is actually, for them also, it was real estate, right? And that is where the governmental uh, uh, issues had, had happened. Government and or government authorities or government bodies or, or those kind of things had assured the villages of housing in this area, right? So there was a typically uh, uh, you know, uh, unrest in that area. So, so, so their biggest thing was that, as our families expand, where will we go? We are, we are, we are, we are, we are blocked on all sides. Uh, to a certain extent, we, uh, the arguments that we, were, we, we had to have is that you're not really a village anymore, right? You, you're, you're now part of uh, the Greater Bangalore, you're part of the uh, thing, etc., etc. 
but I think some 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 rankling is still there. Still some there. some some rankling will still be there. Will still be there. Uh, they were also caught in a in a uh, most of them were also caught in a dual kind of way. All of them had seen the at least their families had seen the lake in the early days. So they also understood the uh, the beauty of the lake. They probably understood the beauty of the lake more than you know uh, later entrance into Koromangla. But on the other side, there was this uh, uh, you know. Uh, land itself what mm. can be used for to a certain extent we are trying to uh, 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 we are trying to uh, include them in the uh, current project which is the development of the lake in terms of making sure that, that there are spaces for them mm. uh, like. right at the f uh, north side of the lake is uh, uh, was visualized a tree park uh, then we we really realized that there were going to be trees all around while this was a fair amount of open space there we could have just wooded it or we could have actually said this is an extension of the village, not for real estate, uh, not for building, but for community centers, for even a health center probably, uh, 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 definitely a gymnasium, outdoor gymnasium kind of an area. So we are, we are, we are trying to do those kind of things. Uh, India still does not mix, right? Uh, whatever we have tried, the small group has tried, uh, there, is, there is a need, wanting to keep the two, two groups separate. So if, if there's an open space for the wealthy, uh, you know, the, the system, the citizen system kind of says that, well, let's keep this separate, right? Let's keep a different, different open space for that, that. And that, when I said that is, a, you know, that's a failure on our side or my side, that's a failure. That we have not been able to yet to create, saying that open space or commons does not, uh, you know, uh, uh, have a caste creed or, you know, uh, kind of a thing. Society does not believe in that. So, in fact, we've had problems with our own society, with our own people in terms of the cattle, mm. right? So, so when we were making the uh, plans for the thing, we said, look, we need to have some method or some resource for the cattle. Mm. Now, cattle, I'm sorry, I'm digressing from that, but these are the more interesting aspect of the, uh, uh, of the lake development. Uh, cattle, technically speaking, cattle is not allowed in the city, uh, in the city uh, uh, municipality. So you're not supposed to own cattle in the city. That's one way of looking at it, saying you're not allowed to own cattle, so the cattle there, please check it out, go back to a village or something else. The other thing is to understand that the cattle is there. And uh, uh, in, the, in, the, in the studies prior to uh, you know, the lake development, uh, we had done and uh, we found there are quite a number of families in the so-called village who had goats and who had uh, uh, cattle, etc. What do they do? The cattle was left loose in the open land in the early, early times. So what are they going to do if this is this is there? So, so we have sort of created spaces we have created a tank away from the uh, uh, the uh, the lake for washing of buffaloes, uh, you know, as and when required. Access to the open spaces, I don't know. That is that's why I I, I really believe uh, a lake is a very dynamic thing, and uh, you know uh, our responsibility has to be to get the lake going uh, from a from a purely from a physical nature of it. That means the water must come, there must be the physical, physically safe, etc., etc. How the space develops uh, is society's. Society will have to decide how it, how it goes forward. I hope, uh, I, hope the, uh, I hope society decides in a equal, what do you call it, you know, in a, in a kind of equal, equal way where it's not, uh, you know, some people have more rights than the others on the lake. This lake is concerned, uh, uh, fairly simple. This was, uh, this was under the BDA. So BDA were the principal uh, people that we were interacting with and the Urban Development Department. So these are the two uh, jokers in the pack. Uh, we have, yeah, in the execution stages, in the execution stages when we had to do the diversion of uh, uh, sewage, uh, now we'll be the BBMP, the inlets, inlets will come under the BBMP. Those will be there. But uh, the area of fight when the land grab was still still very much real. That was really UDD and uh, uh, and uh, BDA. So as I said, uh, to a certain extent, this project, though I've said I've been there for ten years, uh, it has been a baton uh, baton passing kind of a, a, a project. Uh, original guys who fought for it handed over the baton to another group, which is my co-group. We did entire legal fights, getting getting the land towards us, etc., etc. Then we said, look, it's time to hand the baton over to the next group. 
while the original group is still there. I mean, there are representatives of the original group there, but now this group changes. The texture of this group changes to become environmentalists, uh, lake experts, civil uh, guys who can actually define the lake and how, how, do, you, how do you do the lake. So, so we had, we had, and we borrowed, uh, we imported people from outside of Koromangla, like Harini, uh, you know, in, into, into our system and said, look, boss, come and, come and tell us what the lake is, etc. cetera. Uh, Ramesh, uh, another, another great fighter of lakes came in. So, uh, uh, you know, so many, many people came in and uh, uh, developed a conceptual framework of what the lake should be. And there the conceptual framework was a single line saying that, it is not an artificial lake. I mean, in the sense, it's not a swimming pool. Uh, it has to be a living lake. It has to be a living lake. And that itself decided, defined some characteristics of it. And then went forward into, uh, uh, into the physical design of the lake and the spaces. While doing that, there were studies done in the, in the villages, as I said, to find out their uh, uh, needs and their kind of way they would use it. The, the, the whole aspects of these cows, etc., etc., came, came forth at that stage. Um, there was a lot of, uh, uh, let's say, uh, pure civil kind of a work, which was uh, deciding on the boundaries of the lake and how the, how the contours of the lakes would be and those kind of things. So that's about it. Uh, so we, we restricted that group's activity to a great extent to lake civil work, a few spaces, uh, a few amenities, very, very bare, right? rather than suddenly saying that we wanted gold-plated, uh, you know, uh, 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 things, lights and lamps and, you know, those kind of things. We said, we won't keep it there. And th those, those, if it happens at a later stage, we will see. But right now the focus is to get the civil uh, contours of the, of, the, of the lake in place and get a, get start making a living, uh, living lake. After that, as I said, how the usage of the lake will define what kind of uh, you know, other things uh, have to be done. Also, also to a certain extent, adjoining the, the lake is another land in dispute, which is still going on, where we are looking at. What we are looking at right now is a, it's a land, it's, a, it's about three and a half acres, right? So that, that fight is still going on. It's not resolved yet. So we are, we are basically seeing this as an extension of this area. So a lot of uh, public spaces can actually go into that area. Right? Even parking, if, if it's required, can go into that area. That's the way we are looking at it. It's similar. It's a similar case. It's a similar case of uh, 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 my land, his land, uh, uh, government land, etc., etc. Uh, private party is saying it's his land. It's, he's not being compensated, or he has been promised this land. Government having taken over this land and allotted plots to uh, ML, uh, MLAs, uh, of which there are now only five or six allottees. Uh, while the plan for Koromangla is very clear that this is all civic area, it's part of the lake, an extension of the lake, uh, so that's where it stands. The courts have kind of decided, pushed it forward to a certain extent. Uh, as a group, we are saying, keep it on hold. As long as we have got status quo on this, on this then we will focus on it as and when the time comes up. All right? uh, don't want to take it on. As, we are sure that nothing will happen on this land because we have got the status quo from the courts to say that no building, no allotment, no nothing. So it's a... It's a, it's a no man's game. So that, that benefits us. It, it, just, it just stays as open land without any encroachments, etc. And there are people watching over it. So as and when the lake develops, and as I said, as how society itself decides how uh, you know, this, this entire space should be done, that's when we would look at this space a little bit more closely. And this, this part of it will require a different kind of monies and different kind of uh, inputs from various people to, to make it uh, into an area. We have already done the first level of work of how to do about this. Some of the things, again, I said when inclusive, uh, well, I mean, one of the things that I fought for and uh, I've insisted on is that there's so much of space and it's going to be a, a, a common area uh, uh, that could be activity-based uh, spaces, where it could be a skating rink, etc., etc. Uh, you know, there could be an open-air auditorium, place like that. All that is fine, but make it a lively hub. Remember, there are people called street vendors, right? There is absolutely nothing wrong in earmarking a space for the street vendors to, 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 uh, to sell their wares, I mean, it, it, for eating itself, right? And, and, it's, uh, and uh, it's, it's up to, again, to the community to look after it in a, in a uh, educate them uh, and give them pride of their space on that land. And I'm sure it will work. It happens everywhere in the world. Uh, in common spaces, there, there are hawkers uh, who, are, who are there who, who, 
who have a you know who contribute uh, to the, the entire entire space in a great way so that's that's a visualization of that space not buildings it's it's still uh, not buildings it's not it's not structures it is open land within that open land how can we decide how can we decide uh, you know to to have a to have uh, activities it has not become a lake that's that's what we were trying to say so right now we've got the civil structure but the water has not started coming in so there is still a, a major major jump a major uh, effort to be had uh, the decision uh, by uh, uh, us and therefore by the government people which we brought in and under our supervision we looked at it uh, we uh, run off water from the tertiary drains from the tertiary drains not from the principal big drains was visualized as enough to fill this that is precipitation uh, rainfall precipitation and the drains the roadside drains uh, coverage would be enough to do that and when we looked at it the roadside drains are free of sewage so these are these are normal so there are three three major inlets i mean this is history history is that uh, the lake is in the lowest part of uh, the area right whatever i'm looking up in front of me is hugely above uh, right up in front of me is st johns right that's where the highest point is so the water just flows down from there flows down from there so naturally by gravity it flows down so uh, forefathers had a uh, you know their own way of looking at it uh, not uh, didn't need uh, you know great uh, rocket science to figure out how how to make a lake survive so i've also realized now that the uh, making a lake survive is not ro really rocket science i mean it's it's is one of the most natural things uh, that happens in in geography you know and we just have to give it there so we are we are fairly confident that by precipitation and by tertiary lake uh, tertiary drains uh, in in roads uh, that the lake will get filled um, however there are some on the uh, western side uh, uh, western side there are major uh, 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 drainage lines which are filled with sewage right and we were clear that we did not want a stp kind of environment right because stp here means i am against stp for lakes uh, small lakes uh, principally uh, but anyway it was not there so we've had to do some uh, uh, you know bypass kind of a thing so some of the some of the water 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 inputs we've had to actually put a bypass and cost us cost us a lot of money to create those bypasses hope is that in the future if you are able to clear the up, uh, uh, you know the upstream uh, you know in terms of uh, uh, the sewage usage then that water can also come into the lake that we'll have to open it but right now we are sure uh, we are practically sure we can't we can't handle that problem so we have had to do a sub optimum engineering solution of diverting uh, sewage it's not sewage line it is water lines there is storm water lines filled with sewage so correction of that is not going to happen overnight right? this is going to be a lake which uh, which is ebbs and downs i mean in the dry in the dry area it will go right down to the bottom uh, that's how it will be that's how it is and uh, in the in the monsoon areas it will come up so it will be an up and down and that's the only, that's the way the water itself gets uh, you know uh, uh, rotated so it's not going to be a gushy gushy kind of thing not in the initial sense and it's going to take 4, four to 5 years for the, for the lake to settle down and to really do that because it is a urban lake uh, in the center of residential areas you've had to do things like you said this kind of these kind of safety measures where the chain link we would lovely not to have a chain link fence it's just openness and into the lake but then you know uh, safety safety angles in you know, children etc night time you know, in fact we really don't know how it's going to proceed uh, there's a group of uh, 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 group of us including myself who are debating whether we need to enclose it uh, thoroughly so that you know the uh, in the night times it's it's protected so you know it's urban center so 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 how we do it needs a little bit more thinking and a little bit more uh, deliberations safety uh, nefarious activities you know all those things can happen in open spaces so how do we do that uh, we are also sure that once it's up uh, the government will not do anything about maintaining of that we'll have to do it ourselves so according to how how much cloth we have we'll have to figure out you know how to how to go about uh, you know keeping this lake into a lake come commons come open area come uh, space for space for people how it develops we'll have to do it. we'll have to still decide some of the aspects of it there's a gate there's a gate which is there which which, uh, which is basically uh, uh, well you know the way the way if you've seen the gate it's it's the most uh, craziest gate there's a gate but anybody can approach uh, it from any other side i mean if you wanted you have to have a chain link on we have to have two chain links right 
So it's, it's going to be a crime to have two chainlinks because we are hoping that the land next to it is also going to be us. But, you know, again, uh, these kind of programs don't go hand in hand. So uh, the gate is there to really keep a watchman and rather than a gate. So there's somebody, somebody there, there are some people there. The, the, uh, the playground is a playground, not a playground. So, so, so it, will, it will have a, a, a portion of wooded, uh, wooded area in that area. And then there's an open space. Now that has not been funded yet. How how that those periphery things have to be done has not been funded yet. We have got people from the government, the MLAs, etc., coming forward and saying we have got you eight crores to to do the lake. And right now we are sitting on a situation where we have been promised eight crores. And there's a group of us who are saying why do you eight crores? Why do we want eight crores? I mean, if you got eight crores, why do you want to spend it here? We can make this. We have made this uh, lake in one and a half two crores. Now, to, as of now, we spend maybe two two and a half crores in the lake. Why do we want eight crores? I mean, now, now it now it's getting to be the ridiculous. Where you now you talk of the luxury luxury element to it, you know, which means uh, lamps and lights and uh, you know uh, gold plated <laughs> benches and you know those kind of things. You know, we are saying that look, hang on, let's be let's be realistic about it. I mean, we don't, I mean, so this is one of the cases where there's a group of us saying we don't want eight crores. If there's eight crores, then let's figure out how to use it, where to use it. Let's not use it here. In fact, what I put on the table is that uh, if you've got eight crores, why don't you put half of that into long-term maintenance? Right? Because the biggest problem in most of our spaces is that there is no money for onward maintenance. There is, there is money uh, at a capital level, a capital expense level. The uh, uh, government loves to give capital, uh, capital uh, uh, outlay money because it's very easy to take money away from there. The 10%, 15%, 20%, 30% .30 is very easy to take out of the lump sum money or the tenders which come. It's more difficult to take money out of, uh, you know, ongoing maintenance. Because, you know, it's, uh, you know, citizens come in, it's a smaller amount, it's to do that. So, so they, are, they, are, they are viewing that uh, proposal that we have said, that we don't want the eight crores. We have given a proposal for, uh, for various, various things there, but a par part of it is also to say, why don't we use it for maintenance? Funding, funding of uh, the... It's the government. Yeah, yeah, absolutely, absolutely. And that story was a separate story because, as I said, uh, when uh, the, the technical team, which we call the technical team, which took over, which had environmental, civil engineers, etc., we came, we came up with everything but short of a, what we call a detailed project report, a DPR. Short of a DPR, everything else was there. Depths of the lake, the contours of the lake, the, the structures, the elements were all there on paper. So the government had to convert that into what they call a detailed project report, but they're for their rates, etc., etc. And we had a two-year fight on that. After we got the lake, and after we had the vision plans, etc., which, which was uh, uh, socialized to a larger audience in Koromangala, various groups, saying that this is what we planned, this is the concept of the lake, etc., etc. Uh, the government, we had to fight with the government for two years, because what we estimated as a one and a half, two crores, the first, first estimate from the other side was eight and a half crores. So we had to go to them and say, well, how, how the hell have you got here in that place? Please, please show us. And then we cleared a ruckus. They said, yes, 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 this problem. Second time it came to have seven and a half crores. We created more ruckus. But all this took time, right? And then finally, the tender was given out for about 1.75, 1.75. So if we didn't have a watchdog at that stage, or if, if the baton passing had stopped, and we said, now we've got the land and we've got the thing, and now let the government do the lake, they would have done an eight crore lake for a two crore project. That's what would have happened. So that's the kind of uh, 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 on the ground uh, situations. Uh, various civic groups are, uh, uh, you know, uh, conflicted in this area, in the sense that uh, conflicted and, uh, uh, let me say, tired. You fight for a long period of time, then after that you've got it, there is still another level to go, right? You have been, you have been keeping a particular form saying that Right is right, wrong is wrong, no black, no black, uh, no grace, black and whites. That's the way you approach that. Then when it comes to the project, a lot of guys tend to say, now let it go, yeah. Let them do how they want to do it. And there are some, some who say, no, 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 hang on, hang on, hang on. That's not, that's not on. Uh, we are still talking of uh, public money. We are still talking of public, uh, you know. Uh, uh, whatever is going to be spent here is, is, your, is your money, my money. So we'll have to look at it. A lot of guys, not because they don't have an interest, but they're just tired. At that, at that end of the fight, they say, no, 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 we have fought, we have won it, now let them do uh, and get the lake up. So in this case, we have not done it that way. So, so that was a second or, or probably a third 
avatar of the committee, the group. Now we have the fourth avatar of the committee, which is the monitoring of the uh, project, which means that after the tenders were given, then when the actual civil work is happening, right? So there's another set of people who are now looking at and getting the, like, the civil engineering aspect and the operational aspects in terms of, you know, this thing is not done properly, the contract is not done right here, this thing is not happening, etc., etc. So that is, that is the current avatar is what, is what we are at, uh, what, what we call the project committee. And in the project committee, we, we, we wanted it to have a, a, a little bit more um, sanctity, let's put it that way. So uh, we approached both the government, the BDA and our MLA and said, look, we want a recognition for this. Up till now, we've been fighting as uh, activist citizens to get it up. That's fine, because that's the only way to work. Now it's, it's gone past that. Now uh, we want, want to be recognized as a committee. And so you have to bless this committee so that if we come to you with an issue, or we, we, we have the rights to come and you know, create a ruckus uh, and bring it up. So yes, so the MLA came into that and then we, we formed a kind of a committee which had representatives from various parts of Koromangla in the initial stages. Obviously, as any committee, then, you know, over a period of time, it dies down to seven, six, eight people, nine people. But it's been fairly successful that way. It's been, it's been participatory from that way, and et cetera. Whether the work went on as planned, whether there was a problem, whether the technical uh, contractor did the right work, that's a separate story by itself. That's a separate story by itself. That's, that's a problem in any, any, any civil work that you will take, you will have that problem in terms of uh, you know, bad work or shoddy work, etc., etc. Yeah, the current, the current, uh, the current uh, thing. From the beginning, like the beginning, the beginning was no interaction with the government. It was uh, when, when before the baton was handed over. Mm. Uh, it was, it was a small little group who had a, who had an interest, and we were get, gathering data, get, getting that. So, uh, you know, and asking the government data, but nothing more. When it took the legal frame, then we were, we were in direct opposition, right? I mean, in the sense of direct opposition and direct width. As I told you, there was a, there was a, uh, you know, a off and on kind of a thing of the, of the government. And so there were some parts, some parts of the government which wanted to make it a lake, some parts of the government didn't want to make it a lake. So we were, we were not very popular at that stage, obviously. I mean, this was, and we had to keep that independent uh, uh, view on it. That group went on for some time. Then became a, a technical committee, technical committee, uh, which was really fairly uh, opaque to the government, uh, except when we finished the entire thing. Then we went into the government and said, this is our plan, now convert it. Now we became confrontationist again, because that's when they, they came up with the eight crores and six crores, etc., etc. So it was, it was confrontational, but by and large, a little bit more smoother. Uh, right now, we are now an extended family. Now, now it's you know, developed into a, into a level where you know saying that the committee is an extension of the uh, decision-making bodies of the government, and we are part of that, and so that we will work with that, etc., etc. The only thing important in the, each of the committees is that there must be one or two wild cards within the committee, which which have the you know uh, which have the wild wild nature, so that you know when it gets out of control, you still have to do the shouting and do that. But yeah, you're right. There was different faces. Legal cause, which was the principal cause. That's the only cause. For the group. Yeah, that's the only cause which is of any uh, of documented, yeah. right? Uh, would, we would have paid legal costs in the region of two, two and a half lakhs, maybe three lakhs, roughly around that much. That is the only expenditure that we have recorded. The rest of the expenditures are basically individuals who are working on the thing. So it's, if you ask me what is my petrol cost over 11 years, <laughs> it will probably run to a lot. But you know, nobody's, nobody, none of us have kept account of that. So there's been no, uh, no dipping into any of the funds or a claim on any of the funds on anything else other than the uh, uh, legal cost, which is money in and money out, uh, check check payment out. So, but you are right. If you if if it was in, if it was looked at as a uh, as an organization, and you you are looking at it, the cost is phenomenal. I mean, in terms of time and in terms of effort, in terms of just petrol running around, it's it's fairly phenomenal. Now, Eleven, just take uh, at any point in time six to seven active members, right? Uh, Eleven years is quite a bit. In the, in, the, in the initial stages, it could have been as high as about uh, 20, 20, 20 hours a week, 20, 20 hours a week. Okay. Right. No. No. I'm 20 hours a week by, by uh, uh, not, not man, uh, man hours, 
I am saying uh, uh, man hours would be 100 probably, you know, in the initial stages and court cases and all that. I don't know. I mean, I can't even, I can't even fathom to uh, guess that. No, I, I, as far as lakes were concerned, this, this was new to me. I took on lakes, as I said, I didn't know, any, I don't know a damn thing about lakes. No, we had no, we had no idea about Kaikondali. We had, uh, uh, we were fairly insular at mm -hmm. that stage. Uh, you're talking 11 years ago. 11 years mm -hmm. ago, uh, civic activism in Bangalore, uh, in Bangalore was far and, uh, you know, distributed. Mm -hmm. And the meeting of minds of various groups had not happened. It's only now in this avatar you're, you're seeing names around and, you know, guys waving their hands and saying, you know, forget the Leo Saldanas of the world. They've been there forever. They've been fighting, fighting in Harinis, etc. have been fighting. They are, they are at a different level. They've been fighting at a different level. But most of the sm smaller groups, etc., have only now kind of understood there are various people living around. So it was 11, 12 years ago, there's hardly any kind of pan banglo kind of uh, knowledge on that. But my entry into civic, civic uh, activism was really the master plan uh, 2015, the current master plan, which really came out in 2005. Where you know when the draft master plan came out, and uh, you know that is that is that is how uh, I came into this into this space and uh, uh, found found interest in the area of urban spaces, urban planning, uh, not urban planning per se. I mean, but you know the spaces. How 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 does the space look like? How how what's the distribution? What's the geographical distribution of of a space? How is uh, I mean, I, I'm saying that I, I'm not. I'm, I'm not so interested personally. I'm not so interested in traffic movements or building structures. And I'm not interested in that. But you know, spaces, yes. At one stage, there was about 50, 60 people. Uh, or let me put it this way: uh, uh, the outreach. Uh, the outreach program would have touched maybe 200, 300, 400 people from different, different uh, parts of things. So it went out to various, to various places and, you know, uh, looked at uh, uh, socializing the concept to various places. But at no point in time would there have been a working group of more than a dozen. There would not have been more than a dozen working uh, on, on the project, never. We had a severe problem. Uh, we had a severe problem on the uh, 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 the inclusion issue, uh, the inclusion issue of um, you know the village and how how they integrated it. It's resolved by itself, but there was differences. I mean, there were differences up to as I said, cattle, buffalo. We should not have buffalo. We should ban buffaloes. You know that that inclusive nature of it was was a little uh, difficult. Uh, there was in the initial stages a little bit of a very bad time of, uh, you know, this lake should be looked after by the people around the lake, not others. You know, so this, uh, there was almost a, uh, you know, uh, uh, what do you call it, uh, fiefdom kind of an area, say, say uh, the people who live around the lake should decide what it is. So we had to gravitate that in a different way, saying that, yeah, of course you can decide, but that doesn't mean somebody else who stays a, you know, two kilometers away also can't decide. It's an open space. So that, that was one gravitation. Uh, decision making in the absence of hardcore technical uh, expertise within the group is a, is a challenge by itself, right? So, so there would be three, four different, uh, one of the challenges we had was, there will be three, four uh, guys who in the committee would say, you know, I was a civil engineer and such and such a thing, this is how we do it. And the guy said, I've done 15 lakes myself, this is how we do it. So there's no natural leader. There's no natural leader who says that. So the resolution of some of the technical issues were, were, were a little difficult in the execution stage, not in the conceptualization stage. Conceptualization stage, we were able to handle it pretty, pretty, pretty easily because it was mostly run by environmentalist. So the, so the principle was environmental friendly, etc., etc. Not, not the, uh, not the cement and motor, you know, that kind of a lake. But you know, uh, natural, as close to natural lake as possible was the brief. Uh, given so that developed from there, but the technical nature we had some other problems. Other than that, other than that is the uh, you know it's a it's a perennial issue of there will be some uh, hotheads in the group who are impatient and say look uh, if the uh, government is not doing it or the uh, the engineer is not doing it let's go and kick him, right? 
and there'd be another one, another group which says, no, no, that's not the way to do it. We'll go talk to him, we'll do that. So, so that's just, approaches are very different. You know, there, there are some who had enough and saying we've fought enough and this is, I mean, there's no point in talking, you know, draw the line somewhere. But others who are newer into the game in terms of uh, uh, working in the civic spaces still have hopes on, you know, soft talking and etc. etc. I hope it, I hope that works, you know. Yeah, so, 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 so in a case like this, uh, technically speaking, this is the wetland. All of 10 meters, not 10 meters, but 15 feet is what, is what the wetland is. So we have designed it that way, rather than making it a, uh, 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 what, what we call a, uh, you know, water straight into it. So, so there is a natural uh, aeration process before it goes in here. Uh, at this level, at this uh, 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 kind of a lake, where the, uh, the high level itself is not going to be more than eight feet, at the best, it's not going to be more than eight feet. Uh, it's good enough, probably, and that's what we're saying. But then when we look at a large lake, when we look at a large lake where, where the survival of the lake is dependent on our aeration, because it, it, the, output, uh, the output into that lake is the entire uh, uh, system of uh, Bangalore. That means that the lakes and the sewage and the, uh, whether treated or untreated, uh, you know, that's the kind of thing. Belandur, for instance, the fight we're doing now is in Belandur, right? That is the largest lake of Bangalore. It is the end point of four valleys, three valleys. That means it drains the sewage, the treated, untreated sewage ends up there. Now, how can you have a concept which says that 100, 100 feet uh, is enough of no build? The concept of wetland has to come in here, as traditionally looked at west, wetland. So I think there are lakes of a particular size which require a wetland as you would find wetlands in, let's say, a, a, a rural a rural area. And, and one has to understand that Belandur or something like that is a rural area. It functions as a rural area. It, the lake functions in a rural environment. That's, that's how it is. This is a very different kind of a lake. This has to, you have to devise a more uh, compact nature to it and find out how, how else, which is why we are saying that uh, uh, we have to divert uh, uh, sewage away from it so that we get only uh, relatively clean clean water and then you know, small aeration is what you will do. We hope that that works. So uh, the, the question of identifying wetlands or what is wetlands and how to do that is, um, I don't think the uh, authorities are very clear about it. So it's, uh, I think that's the next, next big fight that we have. There are, few, only, there are only few areas in Bangalore which can account for as large wetlands. So those, those need to be protected. Because if those are not protected, and they in, invariably those larger wetlands are next to the larger lakes. Now, if those wetlands goes, it means the larger lakes goes. If the larger lake goes, as of now, then uh, the network of lakes are dying. If the larger lake goes, that's the end of it. There's no output. There's no, there's no final, uh, you know, uh, uh, destination for the, uh, for the, uh, for the uh, rain, for the water, etc. Then there is, there is severe, severe issues, severe, severe issues. So, um, so the fight for wetlands is also synonymous for the fight of survival of Bangalore. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's uh, at least that's the way I see it. That's the way a lot of environmentalists and a lot of civic activist people see it. Uh, that is not how the way government or builders, the building lobby sees it. So there it, there it is. Well, no, we have been extremely uh, insular in, in that regard. Uh -huh. This group decided that, look, our, our issues are very, very different from some of the issues which are being fought by the other lakes. Uh, so we are not even part of the NAPSIS group and, you know, the other Pan Bangalore, I think we, we know the people, we exchange ideas, etc. and all those things. But we are never part of that because our fight is a very, very different fight. Yeah, there is still a high real estate legal issue. Until the legal real estate issue is sorted out, we don't have a lake. Here, we did not have a lake, we had to sort it out. And most of the other areas, they are looking at encroachments. Uh, encroachments is a, is a very different thing. You know, some part of the lake is taken off, some part of the lake is taken out. Here we are talking of the entire lake being taken off. By, by encroachment and the surroundings. So the fight is very different. And we, we, we really said that we will not be able to win the battle by, you know, one, you know, larger, larger framework of thing. We had to, we had to tread our weary path by itself. So I don't think there's too much learning that can happen to it. We learned a lot from other people in terms of uh, how lakes are designed. 
by importing Harini and other people on that. Our expertise to the rest of the group would be just, uh, you know, dogged, doggedness, uh, that it takes a long time to do it and uh, uh, not to shy away from the degree, legal route. A lot, lot of the groups right now are not taking the legal route. They are, they are, they are not taking the legal route. Uh, I'm not talking of Leo. Leo's, Leo's got a uh, PIL on lakes. Yeah. He's got a PIL on lakes. But most of the other groups are taking lakes on as a um, resident welfare associations taking care of the lake okay. kind of a situation, you know. Mm. Uh, so that is a little difficult because, you know, it's the contradictions of, uh, of the encroachments, etc., etc., become a little difficult to resolve. Because you need to, you, uh, we believe that, as I said, the chini chini bye bye, the friend 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 uh, 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 avatar of the committee is in the last phase. Until you've got the spaces totally to yourself legally, you have to be at a loggerheads fight. I mean, you have to be an enemy with the government. Uh, with the government, and to get to, I use the word enemy loosely, uh. Uh, but you know, you have to be that. You know, you can't compromise on that. After you've got everything else, then fine, yeah. Treating the lake and going forward, etc., is fine. We can do that. So one of the reasons why we are doing it that way is, uh, I think. So now, you know, the inroads have been done. So we are, and also that's also the reason Baton's are, Baton's are handed over, because it's very difficult for me now to be, you know, the most friendliest person with the government which I've been fighting for the last ten years. So you put somebody else who's who's a lot more familiar and a lot more friendly with the government. So they should lead the fight from, you know, in the new avatar of friend friend. Uh, you know, kind of avatar. Okay. We also know how to play games, so that's, that's what it is. No, no, not at all. My biggest, my biggest personal uh, grouse, personal uh, challenge, personal thing is that none of the things that we are doing are scalable. Nothing that we are doing is scalable. Right? It's, it's a project for a project's sake. Even in a master plan, if we input the master plan, we do something in master plan. How it's executed becomes something else. So, uh, if we if we do this lake, it does not mean that next to it there is another uh, real estate land, right, which is supposed to be commons. It will naturally come into open spaces. It will be a separate fight by itself, right? None of this is scalable. None of none of the activity is scalable because that scalability is is uh, somewhere else. That problem is somewhere else. That problem is in the is the decision making process. Is in the participatory governance uh, structures. How that is how that is done. So so there is of course some of us who are working on that in a separate route. But that's the only thing. Your specific question: four, five, six, seven, eight different projects have yielded results in that project. It has not except and given familiarity to us in terms of the uh, decision making structure and given familiarity of us to the person across the table, says, oh, these guys have come, so let's be a little careful. That's about it. But has it changed the outlook of decision making or how they look at it? No. Not at all. Interesting. No, I think that's a 20-year so, uh, so, program. That's a so, 20-30-year program. No, I don't think so. I really don't think so. I, I, I'm saying it's uh, all the systemic changes are our fights from the bottom done there's nothing which is happening and therefore the decision making process itself is already taken care of these these kind of issues the fight for space for citizens participation is still a fight you, it, the people are starting from there uh, for everything they're starting from there no why haven't you talked to us the one thing that you would believe that all this activism would do is that the political bureaucratic system would say ah oh, we have a plan for this space let's go talk to the people that is a systemic change you want before they come. They, they still don't do that. They still make their plan behind the corridors and then at a later stage, somebody knows about it and then somebody steps up and says, now, let's go fight it. That's how it happens. It's still happening that way. Whether it's a metro, whether it's a road, whether it's an over, uh, whether it's an underpass, whether it's a flyover, whether it's a lake, whether it's a master plan, whether it's a sewage uh, uh, system, whether it's uh, anything. No, no, of course it is. Yeah, we have seen the world, no? Commons, I mean, that's, that's where people live, yeah. People don't live in the homes. People live in the commons. That's where, that's where interaction happens. This is, and this is urban. Yeah, and urban, as you, as you go forward, you do not know your neighbor. You will know the person in the park. You will not know your neighbor. Because he's got a life, I've got a life. We've got walls separating us. 
it is only in open spaces that you meet people. And, you know, the commonalities start doing the, the, the vibrancy. Commons is not about, it's of course about environment and green and health and fauna and birds and things like that, but it's for humans. It's, it's the interactive uh, process of the social, of the social uh, phenomenon, right? That's where, that's where people live, where they people interact. I have not got into this area, I told you this a long time ago when I met you. I have not got in this area from a context of give back to society. Uh, you know, I've taken so much on society, it's time to give back, I'm old. I have not come from that context at all. I've come from the context saying, boss, this area is something new, yeah? Right? So let's go, let's go delve into it and see what uh, what's this is about. I mean, you, uh, in a corporate career, you say, fine, bored with this, let's do something else. Bored with this, let's do something else. You know? So similarly, I've, I've stumbled onto this saying, hey, boss, total new lingua franca. Right? It's, it's a language which I don't know. It's a language and environment which I don't know. So let's get into it. The only problem here is that you 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 never learn the lingua franca. It's always it's always going on. So I think it's a uh, my biggest. Uh, you asked me a specific question. What is my biggest uh, learning? And this learning comes from a perspective of being a corporate animal, right? So you know, classical corporate uh, environment, CEO, managing director, kind of a thing. Uh, that. Uh, it is actually very difficult for a corporate animal to participate in civic matters. Because in a, in a corporate world, there's nothing called democracy. It's actually the most non-democratic outfit that you can see, a corporate, corporate India or corporate world. The managing director says, run, you will run. I mean, I'm exaggerating it, of course, but you know, that's how it is. But when you come into the, uh, in here, especially for corporate people, they find it very difficult that his voice is equivalent to the voice of the maidservant. Absolutely equivalent. There's no difference in terms of weightage. And that is a big thing. So it's taken me some time to understand this, this that, you know, uh, whatever my educational background, whatever my this, whatever my that, whatever my knowledge, when it really comes down to uh, the process of what is wanted, what is should be done, etc., my voice is as equivalent to somebody who I would call, inverted commas, socially inferior, intellectually inferior, uh, educationally uh, challenged, whatever else you want to call it. It's like that, it's the same. So it takes a lot of humility. It takes a hell of a lot of humility to understand that concept and not too many people can do that.